This week on Warriors and Company, let me ask you as an old warrior and Vietnam veteran how you come to terms with a cold-blooded massacre committed against civilians by another soldier? Well, I find it very troubling, uh, but I think I'm uh, reluctant to see it as somehow uh, emblematic of the values that prevail uh, in the ranks. Uh, there will be those who will want to excuse the actions of Sergeant Bales, uh, who will uh, cite uh, the growing evidence of his personal difficulties, who will note that this was his uh, fourth uh, combat tour uh, as a way to uh, wave it away. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to go uh, in that direction either. Uh, he needs to be held accountable. Uh, those who sent him on this fourth combat tour need to be held accountable. But Sergeant Bales is not somehow a symbol of the larger U.S. military. Well, even this morning on the way to the studio, the taxi driver was talking about how his niece who had enlisted in uh, the military four or five years ago has now had two tours of duty in Iraq. What, what I find shocking is the profession of people to be shocked that we have these soldiers going back for repeated tours. Uh, it's been reported for years now. Uh, it, it ought to be common knowledge, and it ought to be common knowledge that Americans generally find uh, unacceptable or at least disturbing. I mean, what do we think is going to result uh, when we embark upon open-ended wars to which roughly 1% of the American people are committed in terms of active engagement, and we send them back again and again and again? Uh, I mean, in, in a sense, I think as uh, terrible uh, as this episode is, it really pales, I think, in comparison to what we already know about the epidemic of PTSD, mm -hmm. post-traumatic stress disorder, which is, is already one of the results of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. I can't recall, were, were, were there rotations in Vietnam? Yes, uh, the, the average tour of duty, the standard tour of duty in Vietnam was, was one year. And that war did go on long enough that there were certain numbers of soldiers, not me, uh, who were uh, deployed uh, involuntarily for a second or a third tour, but in nowhere near the numbers uh, that uh, is the case today because the wars have gone on today twice as long as the Vietnam War. The older I get, uh, the more I am persuaded that war is not simply evil and therefore to be avoided if at all possible, but war is destructive of the human spirit. Um, war compromises our humanity. There may be some people who walk away from the experience of combat and are better as a consequence. But I'm persuaded that those people are few in number and that for the great majority uh, there are wounds that may not be visible uh, or that may not become visible uh, until years after the fact. Um, I, I cannot say that I came away from my Vietnam service particularly traumatized, uh, but as time has gone, gone along, I've become increasingly aware of the extent to which friends of mine, classmates of mine from West Point, were traumatized, uh, whose lives were deeply uh, affected sometimes in ways that were not immediately evident back when we were in our 20s or in our, in our 30s. Um, but it's, a, it's an evil thing.